But President Trump took action in January, and that was highly criticized. Mark, do you agree with the president's decision to ban travel from China? Yes, but Senator, you would understand this as a pilot. You guys did step one of the emergency procedure, and then you didn't do anything else. And that is a colossal failure. Uh, when the president thanked China on behalf of the American people in January, Senator McSally stood up and did nothing. We have 4% of the world's population. We have 21% the deaths from COVID-19. And it's because this administration didn't handle this as a public health issue. They dismissed the scientists. Senator McSally doesn't on, I can't think of one occasion where Senator McSally has stood up when the president has made a mistake or the governor has did something that wasn't exactly right. That's not leadership. We need independent leadership focused on solving hard problems, not somebody who's just going to stand there when the leader of a political party is clear, clearly making some mistakes. And, and Senator, when the president did call this a hoax, when he did say it would be magically gone by summer and these sorts of things, uh, did you have, uh, did you publicly say anything in response to that? Oh, what I was doing at the time was fighting tirelessly to get relief to Arizonans, and we passed the CARES Act. We've got the PPP loans out there that saved 85,000 small businesses in Arizona and 1 million jobs. And again, it's just another example of counterfeit Kelly. He criticized the PPP loan, said it wasn't working while his company was secretly getting the loan and, and taking advantage of it. And we passed that relief to stimulus checks and families who were struggling, families in my community, and investing in the treatments and the testing and the cures get that relief out the door to have people hang on. And we, passed, we voted on some additional target relief a few weeks ago. Support to schools, to be able to get kids back to school safely, more support to small businesses. And unfortunately, my opponent says he would have blocked that relief. What was wrong with that bill, Mark, that you wouldn't support this, well, this targeted that, relief to help Arizonans? That it's piece another of legislation example. was even, even the president commented that it was too stingy. And now we're in a situation where Mitch McConnell sent everybody home, uh, four separate vacations since we wound up in this situation without further relief. We have 420,000 Arizonans who have lost their jobs through no fault of their own and now unemployed, and they're trying to get by on $240 of unemployment insurance a week. And Senator McSally went on vacation. Uh, that's not leadership. We need independent leadership putting Arizona first, not more of the same from Washington, D.C. We're going to get to Arizona's economy in a minute, but first let's move on to the Supreme Court. And this first question goes to you, Mr. Kelly. Again, you'll have 90 seconds. President Trump recently nominated Judge Amy Coney Barrett for the Supreme Court. Do you support the Senate moving forward on her nomination or any other nomination in the weeks before the election? I do not. Uh, but let me first say that when Justice Ginsburg... Uh, passed. Uh, it was a tough day for our country, for me personally, especially for my wife, Gabby. I mean, she looked up to her as a hero. We're 30, less than 30 days away from an election. Um, this should be given some thoughtful consideration. I think the next president, regardless of who it is, whether it's re-election of President Trump or Vice President Biden winning the presidency and whoever is elected to the Senate, this de decision should wait till January. This is a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. And to rush it through, I think it's really important to recognize why is this being rushed through right now? And the reason is there's a Supreme Court case in November that's about the Affordable Care Act. And Senator McSally has worked incredibly hard over the last five years to elim eliminate or undermine protections for pre-existing conditions through legislation. That didn't work. She paved the way for this lawsuit that's going to be heard on November 10th, I think. And that lawsuit would take away those protections for 2.8 million Arizonans, potentially. Uh, One million would probably lose their insurance. The other 1.8, it could start costing a lot more. That's not the leadership we need in Washington, D.C. right now. And you got to wonder why. You know, I, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but Senator McSally takes an enormous amount of corporate PAC money into her campaign. When I announced on the first day of my campaign, I announced that I'm not going to take one dollar of corporate PAC money. Senator McSally, we'll go for 45 seconds for a rebuttal. Did you vote to take away funding for pre-existing conditions? Of course I didn't, and I hope we have more time to talk about this. I will always protect people with pre-existing conditions, and Democrats and Republicans agree about that. But about the Supreme Court, the Constitution is the guide. 
And this is not about Amy Coney Barrett, who is an amazing role model, uh, top of her field, the first woman with school-aged children who will be on the Supreme Court. Let's be clear. The Constitution says that the president gets to nominate and the Senate gets to confirm. And all 19 times in history when the party has been the same, they have moved forward with that. But what the left wants, what counterfeit Kelly wants, is to delay this so that they can get liberal activist judges on the bench. When they don't get their way at the ballot box, they want to take away your freedoms from activist judges who legislate from the bench. We're one vote away from, it's a, it's a case called Heller, from losing our individual right to bear arms, our Second Amendment rights. We're one vote away. If you look at actually what happened, this actually took away the ability for those in Nevada to go to church while they could still go to casinos uh, during the lockdowns. Our freedoms are at stake. And Joe Biden won't even release his list of who we would nominate to the Supreme Court. I'd like to know if Mark would call on Joe Biden to release that list. And I'd also like to know, you don't get to pick the timing, Mark. Would you vote for Judge Amy Coney Barrett? Well, we are 30 days away from an election inside of 30 days, and I trust Arizonans to be able to make a choice as to who their next president is and who they're going to elect to the United States Senate. And to rush through this nomination under these circumstances just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. We've got 420,000 Arizonans right now who are unemployed through no fault of their own and are trying to get by on $240 a week. Why isn't the United States Senate dealing with that? That's my question to Senator McSally. Instead, this is a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. It should take some thoughtful consideration. And I think the voters deserve to have a say as to who is going to nominate the next Supreme Court justice to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mark, this is just another example where you're not answering the question. Another example of trying to say basically nothing to get elected. But you know right well the winner of this race could be seated right away as early as November. So you don't get to decide the timing. You just get to decide what your vote is. Would you vote yes or no on Judge Barrett? Well, I said I would vote no. This should wait. Okay. This should wait until so you January not confirm when that. we have a new president and a new Senate where within 30 days of the election and Senator McSally wants to rush through a lifetime appointment. And it, the reason is it's this case about pre-existing conditions and the Affordable Care Act, which through legislation, even after voting four times to undermine or eliminate those protections for pre-existing conditions, that didn't work. So now this is Senator McSally's option to be successful in the project she's been working on for five years. We have 2.8 million Arizonans who have a pre-existing health care condition, and some of them could lose their health insurance because of this. Mr. Kelly, if you are in fact elected because the seat replaces the late John McCain, mm -hmm. you could be sworn in as soon as the votes are certified. If you are in the Senate, would you support a filibuster <laughs> to delay the nomination? Well, this, this, this whole thing indicates how broken Washington is. The discussion of, of the filibuster, uh, an old Senate rule. Uh, by the way, it's, I think it's important for everybody to understand that when it came to passing a $1.9 trillion tax cut for the wealthiest Americans and big corporations that Senator McSally voted for in 2017, the Senate was okay to go to 50 votes. So they abolished the filibuster for that. They also abolished the filibuster to try to eliminate the Affordable Care Act and those protections for pre-existing conditions. Senator McSally was okay with that, too. Hey, if this comes up as a discussion, if I'm elected to the United States Senate, I will give it thoughtful consideration, and I'm going to do what's in the best interest of Arizona and our country, not what's in the best interest of one political party or the, or the other. Mr. Kelly, you've been a candidate for more than a year. Many people think that you should already have an answer to that question. Why would you not, would you be able to hit the ground running on day one if you're still thinking about something Absolutely. like the filibuster? I mean, we, we don't know if this is going to come up for even a discussion. Um, it might. And if it does, I will give it thoughtful consideration and I will do what's in the best interest of Arizona and Arizonans and the best interest of our country and not the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. And I think it's important to note very important to note that parties aren't in power very long, for very long, traditionally, right? It goes from one party to the other. And whatever decision is made on this is going to, you're going to have to live with it from being on the other side. And I understand that. And I will give this thoughtful consideration in, in a way that, you know, not, not what is in the best interest for, for Democrats 
or what's in the best interest for Republicans? What's in the best interest of Arizona? And, and real quickly, Senator McSally, I think voters want to hear why it is not hypocritical uh, for Republicans to go ahead with this during the last uh, year of a term for President Trump when they blocked the nomination in the last year for President Obama. The Constitution is the guide, and the precedent is that in the 10 times in history, all 29 times in history, an opening happened during an election year, all 29 times the president nominated. But when the parties were different, the 10 times, then they didn't get advice and consent. But when the parties are the same, in those 19 times, they all moved forward. Again, this is about, they want stall tactics in order to get their liberal activist judges on the bench, and they want to pack the court. The fact that counterfeit Kelly can't even answer the question, would he vote for Chuck Schumer? Of course he'll vote for Chuck Schumer. He's Chuck Schumer's star recruit. He's poured tens of millions of dollars into this race. And he said this week, we're, we're not going to waste this majority if we get it. They're going to abolish the filibuster. He just won't answer honestly to you, Arizona. He's saying one thing here in Arizona, but he just can't because Chuck Schumer is trying to buy this election and you're going to stop that from happening. I have a question, mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly. Who do you need to hear from to form an opinion on the filibuster question? I'll need to hear an opinion from Arizonans. And when I make that decision, I will let Arizonans know. Um, this is something that might not even come up for discussion. And if it does, I'm gonna, I'll spend some time thinking about it. And I'll make a decision based on what's right for Arizona. You know, Senator McSally had this. I don't, I don't know how many people could even follow what she was talking about you know, with, with these votes here. But what's simple about this is Washington is broken. And this highlights how broken it is that we're having these fights over old Senate rules. What we need to be focused on are people's health care. We're in je we've got a lot of individuals and families that, families that have lost their health care due to this pandemic. Um, the economy, these are the issues that Arizonans care about, not a rule in the United States Senate. Senator McSally, let's move on back to the subject of China. Because China, obviously, many national security officials, current and former, yeah. consider it to be our most important adversary at this yeah. point. How would you go about the relationship with China? And in some ways, has the president made light of it to some extent by mentioning the Chinese flu? How seriously has he done things? And do you credit the administration for holding China in well, check? Well, China is our biggest geopolitical threat. I've been involved in national security my entire adult life, and we've seen the rise of China. And look, they have been helped by, unfortunately, political elites like Joe Biden, who have outsourced our jobs to China. They're stealing our technology. They, they're building islands where they didn't exist in the South China Sea and militarizing them. But ultimately, Americans are now awakened because they unleashed this virus on the world. And then we realize that we're relying on our PPE for China. We're re relying on pharmaceuticals and other things. So I'm standing up to China to hold them accountable, to bring things back home so they're made in America again. But let me tell you a story. Again, I started in 2003, while he was active duty. Mr. Kelly went over on this Chinese Communist government funded trip, 2003, 2004, 2005, said it was the most meaningful thing in his life other than going to space. They're just trying to bring elites into their orbit. Orbit. It was so meaningful to him. In 2006, he had a chance to go to space. For every little boy and girl whose dream is to go to space, the astronauts who are supporting me, one of them uh, was an Apollo 16 uh, astronaut. And you get to bring a few things to space with you, just a few things. And he brought an American flag, this other astronaut, and a flag of Arizona or a flag of his state. But what Mark Kelly decided to bring to space was the banner, the Chinese communist banner from this forum, this junket that was paid for by China, of all the things that he could have brought to space. He later on retired and then recruited Tencent, a company close to the Chinese government, to invest in a company that he co-founded. And later he was over there pe peddling a pyramid scheme of vitamins with a motorcycle with a Chinese flag on it. So I'm standing up to China while my opponent is doing business with China. And this is the biggest threat we have going forward. We need someone who's going to be strong on China, not doing business with them. Mr. Kelly, respond to those accusations right. about your China relationships and then broaden it out for how you deal with China. Well, Senator McSally just started making China an issue this election cycle when Mitch McConnell allies physically handed her a memo and says, this is the issue in your election. You know, go for it. Hey, I'm a veteran. I served the United States Navy for 25 years. I lived in Japan. I spent time flying off of an aircraft carrier in the South China Sea. I've known China as an adversary my entire adult life, not because I got a memo from Mitch McConnell. You know, Senator McSally is focused on this now because she's desperate to, to win an election. You know, I had the opportunity to start a, 
uh, a business here in Arizona. And I'm never going to apologize for creating good paying jobs and creating a business that is a lot of economic activity here in the state of Arizona. Uh, but Senator McSally will use false attacks. She'll question my patriotism over and over again. It's what she did in 2018, and I think folks recognize that. I mean, from this very podium in 2018, Senator McSally yelled treason. So this is just the same false negative attacks. Let me talk about China for a second. So China has been an adversary of ours. I recognize this in the 1980s. Uh, anywhere on the planet where we leave a vacuum, China's going to step into it. We need to hold them accountable. We need to use the diplomatic and economic tools at our disposal to do that. Senator McSally said nothing, nothing, when the president thanked China on behalf of the American people because of the response on COVID-19. Why is that? Well, I don't think she had her memo yet. Um, so th this is just a political issue. Uh, Senator McSally is using false, negative attacks trying to attack my patriotism again and you know it's it's i think arizonans are tired of it i'm not questioning your patriotism mark i'm questioning your judgment and the facts are there you went on the junket paid for by the chinese communist government part of their propaganda arm in 2003 while active duty navy 2004 2005 you said it was the most meaningful thing you've done in your life and then you chose of all the things you could have selected i think about what i would have taken to space with me you chose the Chinese communist banner to take to space with you. And then you later have multiple business relationships and ventures with companies that are affiliated with the Chinese government. Those facts are real. So people want a fighter who's going to stand up to China, then I'm your girl. I've been already doing that. They're actually threatening me personally. My mom's a little freaked out about that, but I'm your fighter for this threat. You want somebody who's in business relationship? I'm not, again, I'm not questioning your patriotism. It's your judgment. Your business relationships put you in a place where you're weak on China. So, Mr. Kelly, just yeah, I'm not weak on China. Briefly I mean, respond I, to this this 2006 communist flag thing. Is this well, true? Well, I, I don't know what she's talking about. Um, I, I don't know where she gets gets her information. She may have found something on the internet. Um, you know, I've recognized China as an adversary for my entire adult life. Um, you know, Senator McSally talks about this when she's campaigning because she she thinks you know, that this is the way for her to win an election. And that's not what Arizona needs. We need independent leadership focused on solving hard problems. I mean, I had to deal with the Chinese when I was in space on my third space shuttle mission when I was a commander and they blow up a satellite in low Earth orbit. I mean, I had a geopolitical major issue uh, that was directly related to aggression by China as they were te testing a missile. I mean, I've known this stuff for a long time. But Senator McSally just likes to lob false political attacks, you know, and question her opponent's patriotism. We've seen it before. Let's shift now to health care. Mr. Kelly, you support the creation of a government run health insurance option for the public. How much exactly would the system cost and what is your preferred way of paying for it? So um, health care is incredibly personal for me. When my wife, Gabby Giffords, was shot in 2011, she suffered a serious traumatic brain injury. And I'll never forget being in that ICU room for the very first time and seeing her and looking down and wondering what this means for us. What does this mean for her? What does this mean for our family? Now, fortunately, she had, she had good health insurance. And that's not true for every American, especially lately with folks losing their jobs and health care costs too much premiums, deductibles, co-pays, prescription medication. You know, these are the issues that Arizonans care about and should be working on. So a public option to compete with private insurance on the health care exchanges when there are only one option makes a lot of sense. And individuals would, would potentially pay for that insurance. That's a public option. I think we should also allow folks to buy into Medicare at a certain age, say 50 to 65 years old. That makes a lot of sense. You could remove them from the risk, risk pool. And then... We have to address this issue of pre-existing conditions. Senator McSally has voted four times. And I often wonder my, to myself, why is that? Well, Senator McSally takes a lot of corporate PAC money from the health insurance industry and from big pharmaceutical companies. So there's not a lot of, there's, there's, there's not a lot of uh, desire to make changes in our health care system that will help Arizonans when you're doing something that is not helping those corporations. Well, who ends up paying for this public option? Is it, do we just add to the national debt? Is there some other mechanism? Well, at, so at some point, 
right? In, in this case, when you provide a public option to compete with private insurance, the person buying the insurance through the public option would be paying for that insurance. And if you're, you know, if we're starting to talk about the national debt, Senator McSally voted for a $1.9 trillion tax giveaway to big corporations and the wealthiest Americans um, when there was no point in doing that. And 80% of that went to the wealthiest Americans and big corporations put us in a position where and now where we really have to make some really hard choices when a lot of folks need COVID relief. I've been standing up to the powerful and protecting the vulnerable my entire life. It's what my whole life story is about. And Republicans and Democrats can agree on a couple things related to health care. First is we will always protect pre-existing conditions. There's nobody who disagrees with that. The second is that Obamacare is failing. It's not working. And so what I'm doing is fighting for more options for people. We took away the penalties because the way Obamacare worked, that if you couldn't afford their unaffordable health insurance, the government was fining you. And so I'm fighting for more options for small businesses to band together, for people to have choices. But this public option, which is Bernie Sanders uh, light, really it's the next path to the full government takeover of health care. This is going to have, you can't have a public option compete with private health insurance. Everybody who gets health insurance from their employer is eventually going to lose it. The full government will take over. And Medicare, as we know it, will be collapsed. Any seniors tuning in under this expensive plan that is the first step to the government takeover of healthcare. What I want to know, Mark, is how much is the public option going to cost? Senator McSally, I do have a question for you on health care. You have been supportive of Republican plans that nonpartisan analysts say would have left 23 Americans, including many in Arizona, without health coverage. The Senate plan that you are co-sponsoring would guarantee coverage of pre-existing conditions, but those nonpartisan analysts say it would allow women to be charged more than men. Why then should Arizonans want either of those yeah. plans should the uh, ACA or if the ACA already covers them? Well, I agree women shouldn't be charged more than men. Kids should be able to stay on their parents' insurance till they're 26. And we should never be allowing insurance companies to deny people uh, insurance for pre-existing conditions or raise their, their cost. But what's happened with Obamacare is the costs keep going up. You know, I met a family uh, when I was walking, uh, knocking doors in the West Valley, Brigham and his wife, Tammy, and four kids. And before Obamacare, he's a plumber, owns his own business. Before Obamacare, he paid $300 a month for his insurance. It's gone up four times since then. It's more than his mortgage now. And we had over, before we got rid of the penalty, we had over 150,000 Arizonans under Obamacare who paid a fine because they couldn't afford the health insurance. And uh, 80, over 80% 80 of them were making less than $50,000 a year. So I'm passionate to provide more choices, but this government takeover of healthcare is dangerous. And make no mistake, the public option means the government is competing with private health insurance. They're never going to be able to compete. Private health insurance goes away and then you have the full government takeover. And I'll tell you, Medicare right now, they say, is going to be insolvent in 2025. Their scheme that allows people to just be put on, more people to be put on Medicare will have it collapse. Rural hospitals will close. Your taxes will go up over $2,300 just in the public option. Private pa practices will close. And 178 million Americans who get on the job health insurance will lose it. This is what's dangerous about their plan. I'm fighting for more options for people buy insurance across state lines, allow small businesses to band together so they have more choice. Let's provide that taxpayer resources to backstop those with the highest expenses. And let's find more options that protect people with pre-existing conditions, not the government health care like counterfeit Kelly is offering. All right. Uh, do you want to Can follow I, up? Please. Do you, you want to yeah, rebut? Folks, this isn't rocket science. Just follow the money. Senator McSally took a ton of money from health insurance companies and voted to eliminate protections for pre-existing conditions. She took a ton of money from pharmaceutical companies and voted to increase the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. She took millions of dollars from corporate PACs and gave companies billions of dollars of tax giveaways. Bottom line, Senator McSally isn't working for us. She's working for somebody else. She's working for that company that funds that corporate PAC that funds her campaign. That's not putting Arizona first. 
I've got to be able to respond to that. I please, mean, this is please. another example of saying one thing and just the counterfeit nature of this whole campaign and what he's saying to Arizonans. He, it, for between the beginning of 2018 and the end of 2019, or, or 18 months, he got $1.8 million in speaking fees, speaking to financial companies and insurance companies. I'm talking about into his bank account, okay? And he uses all the end runs in order to be, be able to get corporate money from employers and executives. Don't be fooled. He's saying one thing to all of you that may sound good, but in reality, he's getting rich and has gotten rich off corporations and they're funding his campaign. We cannot put up with more counterfeit discussions on this. I mean, this is saying one thing and then the attacks towards me. I'm always going to protect people with pre-existing conditions and they're attacking my integrity. Integrity first is the top core value in the Air Force and in my life. And I've been standing up to the powerful and protecting the vulnerable my whole life, and I'm going to keep doing it as your fighter in the Senate. On this issue of pre-existing conditions, people in Arizona are very concerned about this. Healthcare consistently is a top issue in this race. Why should Arizonans trust you on this issue? Because I'm telling you, I'm committed to protecting people with pre-existing conditions, and I have repeatedly voted to include last week to protect people with pre-existing conditions. But there's people in Arizona with pre-existing conditions right now who are being failed by Obamacare. What about them? So I'm rolling up my sleeve. Some politicians sit back and they don't want to solve hard problems. I'm rolling up my sleeve to fight for them. The entrepreneur who's going uncovered right now, who I met in Tucson, the franchise owner, Hispanic franchise owner, had to give up his businesses because and work for a big business because he got di uh, diagnosed with diabetes. So we've got to fix this. And we've got to protect people with pre-existing conditions. These are scare tactics. And I'm also going to continue to fight to stop the government takeover of health care. These guys agree Obamacare is failing. I wish the media would, would at least acknowledge that. But what they want is going to be dangerous to Medicare and those who get on-the-job health insurance. Uh, Mr. Kelly, do you agree that uh, Senator McSally always protects those uh, with pre-existing conditions? Well, of course not. Uh, and Arizonans already know they can't trust Senator McSally when it comes to health care. She's voted on four separate occasions to undermine or eliminate those protections. I was with this mom, Stacy, recently. And her daughter's named Zoe, and she had a uh, terrible heart condition that she was born with and had to have multiple surgeries. And she reached a lifetime cap when she was not even into her teens on what her health care has cost. And they were always concerned that because of her pre-existing condition as an adult, she wouldn't be able to get health care coverage. But then the Affordable Care Act came around, and it changed their lives. Senator McSally is trying to take away those protections from 2.8 million Arizonans. She's done it on four separate occasions. She paved the way for a lawsuit that's at the Supreme Court. It's, the case is going to be heard on November 10th. That's not independent leadership. We need independent leadership that's going to put Arizona first, that's not going to put a big corporate PAC or a health care company or a big pharmaceutical company first. All right. Um, Can I, look, these scare tactics, these votes he's talking about, Arizonans, it's because I said I was against Obamacare, because I hear too many stories of where Obamacare is failing people and they have pre-existing conditions and they can't get access to affordable health insurance. So I'm fighting to start the process to find more options for you. And a lot of politicians just sit back and vote no because they're afraid of just these scare tactics from counterfeit Kelly. Instead of him being honest about what their plan will do, the, the public option will end Medicare as we know it, will take away your private health insurance for 178 million people and raise your taxes. It's dangerous. I'm going to fight against it. But know that these votes and this scare tactic, it's a lie. It's Re because I'm passionate about fixing the health care system that's broken right Mr. now. Mr. Kelly, quick rebuttal, please. Yeah, those, those protections, by the way, that 2.8 million Arizonans have, well, all 7.5 million of us were saved by John McCain in a vote in the United States Senate. He saved the Affordable Care Act, so he saved those protections that Senator McSally spent years trying to undo. Okay, uh, we need to move on here. Uh, Senator, uh, you have consistently supported uh, President Trump. You supported the administration's policy. Uh, you voted policies, I should say, and you have voted uh, not to uh, convict on impeachment. Are you proud of your support for President Trump? Well, I'm proud that I'm fighting for Arizonans on things like cutting your taxes. We passed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, 
and on average, Arizona middle class families had their taxes cut by $2,000. We had such a strong economy before this first in a century pandemic hit. And so we fought to cut your taxes. We fought to rebuild our military after the Obama Biden dec uh, administration decimated our military. 25% cuts when deployments were going up. We had a hollow force uh, voted to secure our border. Border security is national security. And that means something here in Arizona. We see the cartel activity. And as your senator, I've got the most bills passed than any other senator, tied for first. Uh, for most bills signed into law out of any of the 100 senators and was the sixth most bipartisan senator. That's my record, fighting for Arizona, putting legislation on the president's desk. I put legislation on President Obama's desk when I was in the House. I put legislation on President Trump's desk. I go to Washington, D.C. with an AZ on my jersey to fight for Arizona. But this is what's at stake here. My opponent says he would, he would support Bernie Sanders at the top of the ticket when he was surging. And we now have a situation where this is going to decide the Senate majority. And if Biden, Schumer, and Pelosi are in charge, they're going to abolish the filibuster. They're going to ram through the most radical agenda that we've seen. So counterfeit Kelly says he's an independent and a moderate and lots of platitudes here. But the stakes could not be higher. If you want your tax cuts, I'm your girl. You want the largest tax increase in history? You got Sen somebody else over here. Senator, the question was, are you proud of your support for President Trump? I'm proud to be fighting for Arizona every single day. Is that a yes or a no for President putting Trump? Putting legislation on President Trump's desk. So you're proud of your support for you, President you Trump? You look at the legislation we put on his desk, it's to cut Arizona taxes. It sounds like she is proud of her support I'm for President Trump. I'm proud to be fighting Trump. for Arizona. The question is, why was he wanting to support Bernie Sanders? Are, do you, regarding President Trump, your overall impression of his behavior and his actions in office. Your opponent just basically said she's proud of her support. Would you support such a person? Not a, no, not acceptable. And, um, but what really concerns me are uh, the things that matter to everyday Arizonans, like their health care, uh, like a $1.9 trillion tax cut that he passed that went to the biggest corporations and the wealthiest Americans. And after that tax cut was passed, twice as many companies paid zero dollars in federal income tax. That's not leadership. That's not what we need. I think that was a mistake. That didn't help middle class taxpayers and working class folks here in Arizona. Um, so I have major concerns, but we have an election in 30 days and America has a choice to make as to who's, who the next president is gonna be, who's gonna serve in the Senate, the House, there's governor's races around the country. These are serious issues. We've got a public health crisis and a serious economic crisis. We have a United States Senate that has gone on vacation four times since this pandemic has started. And I don't think Senator McSally has stood up once to her party and said, why are we going home? We have serious issues to address. Arizona has 420,000 individuals trying to get by on $240 a week. They're having to make horrible choices about paying their rent and buying groceries and filling their prescriptions. That's not choices that Arizonans should have to make when they did nothing wrong here. The federal government and Senator McSally failed. And we have 4% of the world's population right now. We've got 21% of the deaths from COVID-19 210,000 individuals have lost their lives. Would you have voted to convict President Trump of impeachment? Well, first, I wanted to see, you know, testimony from the White House, witnesses. Uh, that would have been uh, a good starting point. But based on the information I had, yes. And Senator McSally, real quickly on your end, would you have wanted to serve under someone like a Donald Trump when you were in the military? Well, again, I'm proud to be working with the president to rebuild our military uh, under Obama and Biden. They cut our military to the bone. We had a readiness crisis like we haven't seen uh, in so many years since really Jimmy Carter. And now we're giving them everything they need to fight tonight. Uh, but if, if you look at what Biden, Schumer and Pelosi will do if they're in charge, they're going to cut our military to pay for their schemes. But talking about taxes, I do want to go back to this. I released my taxes today uh, so that I'm transparent so that people can see what kind of money I've made, how I made it and what I paid in taxes and deductions and gave to charity. I'm calling on my opponent to also release his taxes so Arizonans can see where he's made his money over the last five years and where that all came from. I mean, this is just basic transparency. And I'll tell you, what, the tax cuts that I'm very proud of, very proud of, because okay. you know a family of four in Arizona, they make $60,000 before they pay, pay their first dollar 
in taxes. This was meaningful to Arizonans. And, and Senator, the question remains, would you, have been, would you have liked to have served under someone like a Donald Trump when you were in the military? Someone who is giving our military everything they need to fight tonight. We've had 75% of our army units who couldn't deploy over, over, under Obama and Biden. So the, so, the answer, so the answer is yes. Giving us what we need so that we are not looking into museums for parts for airplanes, so that we can ensure that we can fight against our enemies. We gave them the largest pay raise in 10 years. Uh, we're investing in capabilities to take we're on China. Uh, this is it's so important that we continue to support our military, and I've been working with President Trump to rebuild them. All right. Uh, thank you, candidates. We're now going to take a short break here, and we will get right back to the debate, and we'll do so in just a few minutes. This election season, stay informed with news and analysis you can trust. From Frontline, The Choice 2020, Trump versus Biden. Voices presents Latino Vote. The PBS NewsHour. Biggest day of voting since the COVID-19. Washington Week. Nation on edge. Amon Poren Company. This is a very difficult time. And Firing Line. Our election's going to be vulnerable. Get complete election coverage with these programs and so much more. This fall, only on PBS and the PBS Video app. Attention, please. I got something I gotta tell you. I was raised to believe no dream is unreachable. You can't get in the way of a good story. Hemingway is this enormous talent. That's wonderful. What I got is the game just got bigger. Did you? It's better than better. Wow. It remains a fast-moving story. Get to the bottom of it. This is what adventures are made of. Slime molds. How could you not love them? <laughs> Phenomenal. What you about to see. That's pretty amazing. I can't believe it myself. Wow. I'm speechless. I believe this right here is the best. Oh, that's some hot gossip for you, isn't it? It's I love bringing other people together. I feel like I'm doing something important. How powerful is that? Stay curious. I grew up waiting for the nights during the week when Nova would be on because I was so deeply interested in science. We haven't seen anything like this before. And it was inspiring for me as a young person to be able to learn about it in the masterful way that Nova presents it, and with Ken Burns. And I learned so much about the Civil War, not only the facts of the war, but the feel of the war. PBS has a way of educating, informing, and entertaining the public that I don't think anybody can match. It's more unbelievable than anything we could have imagined. I think he was a terrific father, sometimes. I think that he was a loving husband, sometimes. I think he was, like so many people, except this enormous talent. Hemingway is very complicated. I hate the myth of Hemingway. It obscures the man. And the man is much more interesting than the myth. Vice presidential debate. The candidates will make their cases to the American people. Congratulations. I'll see you in Salt Lake City. Who can convince voters their ticket should lead? We don't have to accept the failed government of Donald Trump and Mike Pence. A PBS NewsHour Vote 2020 election special. The vice presidential debate, October 7th at 9, 8 central on PBS. In 1930, Germany was a democracy. Just four years later, Hitler and the Nazis were in control. Political networks were evaporated overnight. Historians uncover how it happened. Conspiracy murder. Can be described only as mafia politics. And what could have been done to stop it. It is a warning to us to prevent this from happening again. Rise of the Nazis. Tune in or stream starts Tuesday, November 10th at 9, 8 central, only on PBS. We are back for the debate between the two candidates running for U.S. Senate in Arizona. Incumbent Republican Senator Martha McSally and Democratic challenger Mark Kelly. 
All right, the question for both of you, we're going to talk specifically about border communities. As you know, travel restrictions do continue at ports of entry. Um, travel is down by about 40 percent, mm -hmm. which equates into a drop in sales tax revenue in communities directly along the border, which, as you both know, um, face challenges when it comes to poverty. What sort of plan do you have to give those communities extra support as we come out of the pandemic? Senator McSally, we'll begin with you. Oh, well, great. First passed the CARES Act to be able to get relief out to families and to small businesses. But uniquely on the border, I've you know, helped pass USMCA. This is a great opportunity for cross-border commerce and more jobs in Arizona. And I've delivered on a port, the ports of entry, the San Luis port of entry. Uh, I delivered to be able to get over $150 million uh, to upgrade that. And as part of my bipartisanship, I've been working with Senator Sinema on issues uh, on the border so that People can travel more than 75 miles. This is a bill we're, we're both behind uh, and spend more money uh, around Arizona uh, in border communities and beyond. But when we're talking about the border, there's a lot at stake here. Uh, border security is national security. I do support uh, the president's uh, border wall, the border wall system. Uh, and Border Patrol agents and ranchers are really seeing a difference. You know, my opponent, unfortunately, when the vice uh, president of the Border Patrol Council went to meet him at the Veterans Day Parade last year and just reached his hand out to shake his hand. He wouldn't shake his hand, turned away and said, you're one of them. When nobody was looking, this is what Mark Kelly did. He says he's border for security, but then he turns his back and won't shake the hand of a Border Patrol agent. Uh, and when he ran this political organization I mentioned earlier, $57 million raised endorsing candidates all over the country. He also endorsed David Garcia for governor who said, we shouldn't have any borders. We should have no border security, no border wall. I mean, that's what's at stake here. Uh, when he says one thing here, which we'll probably talk about border security, but being behind David Garcia and not shaking a border patrol agent's hand, I mean, that's another example of counterfeit Kelly saying one thing on camera or in 30 second ads, but doing something totally different when nobody's looking. Mr. Kelly, 45 seconds first. Did you not shake the hand of a federal law enforcement officer? That, that never happened. I will shake anybody's hand anytime. I'm the son of two police officers. My mother was one of the first female police officers in northern New Jersey. Uh, I don't know where Senator McSally gets this stuff from. Uh, but from the agent. The, Do you the, believe the, in the more issue. border security? Yeah, well, well first of all, you, the question was about uh, sales tax and... And I, I believe you mean because the ports of entry have been closed that these communities are suffering economically. I think it's important to note that Senator McSally uh, months ago at the beginning of this pandemic clearly said that towns and cities, communities shouldn't get extra help from the federal government to get us through this crisis. And I think that's wrong. That's why these communities are suffering. But the main reason why they're, why they're suffering is we have a failure of leadership to address with to a, address a serious pandemic. We've got 4% of the world's population, 21% of the COVID-19 deaths. This administration and Senator McSally didn't take the appropriate action necessary to get this under control. There was no, there was no plan when we, we shut down the economy and then we didn't have a plan to what do we do now? They just basically ignored it. Uh, there was no plan for testing and contact tracing. Um, you know, so I, I think it's important to note that we need strong border security. Um, you know, that that is clear. Uh, I worked at NASA for, you know, 15 years. You know, NASA wouldn't give you the 17th century solution to the 21st century problem. Uh, but there's a way to do this. And border security is incredibly important to our state. It's important to our economy. Senator McSally, you've expressed support for President Trump's border wall. Yeah. There was some concern about how it was funded, though. The president said Mexico would pay for it. That hasn't happened. Also, some money was diverted from the Defense Department. You've already expressed support for the military clearly mm -hmm. and for how President Trump has handled it. How do you feel about how the money was being used to build the border wall? Well, border security is national security, and we should not have to choose to, uh, between supporting our military and securing our border. So I'm for both, and I've been voting for increased funding for both of those. But we need to go back to, did you hear what he just said? He's against a 17th century solution. So that means he's against the border wall, which ranchers like John Ladd, fifth generation ranchers, are seeing right now what the border wall system is doing to stop the illegal activity across the ranch. But, you know, Mr. Kelly tries to pretend that he's just an aw shucks, uh, independent, not political guy. But over the last decade, he has led one of the most sophisticated 
radical political organizations. And while he's saying one thing here in Phoenix, he was literally flying all over the country to bankroll and to endorse extreme liberal candidates who are so left-wing and dangerous on these policies, like members of the squad, Ilhan Omar, uh, Rashida Tlaib. Uh, these, are, these people are leading the effort to abolish ICE, uh, to stop border security. And if you remember, uh, all of the Democrats running for president raised their hand, you know, free health care for everybody here illegally, decriminalizing border crossing. This is what's at stake in this election. If the Senate majority flips, which will go through Arizona, they will ram through this agenda, which is so extreme. But Mr. Kelly is not, has been funding and and been bankrolling and endorsing these extreme candidates who are behind these ideas over the last decade. Make mo no mistake, he is a political operative. It was a very sophisticated operation, okay. Senator, and that impacts our border security. Time is up. Uh, would you like to respond, please? Well, border security is critical to our state, and what we need is technology uh, in the appropriate places. In some places, a barrier and fencing completely makes sense. More border patrol agents on the border. Um, that's, you know, smart way to do this. I think we also need more judges to handle asylum seekers. And we've got to address this issue of DACA recipients and give them some certainty in, in their lives. You know, Senator McSally used to support Dreamers. Uh, and then she said DACA is unconstitutional. There was a bipartisan uh, agreement on a pathway to a normal status for Dreamers. Senator McSally used to support it. And then when it wasn't politically convenient anymore, she, you know, decided not to. Um, that's not the independent leadership that Arizona needs. Senator McSally, we're going to want to get your take on DACA, but yeah. to follow up on this, there have been many people on both sides who've said, yes, border security, vitally important, yeah. but they talk more about technology as opposed to the wall. The old joke was build a 10-foot wall, someone will find an 11-foot ladder. Is there more to be done with border security than just President Trump's wall? Well, it's a border wall system. And when you talk to the ranchers, it really makes a difference whether there's chicken wire or whether they have uh, 30 foot and six foot down, a paved road, the sonar sensors. Uh, it allows Border Patrol to do, use intelligence driven operations to detect and intercept the activity. Also using airborne assets and, and manned and unmanned, uh, you know, uh, uh, with towers and airborne assets and, and other things. So it's all of the above. Uh, but the border wall system is making a difference. Uh, and, and Mr. Kelly still hasn't answered the question as to what he can say he's for border security, but you support, uh, you support politicians like Omar and Tlaib. You said you support Bernie Sanders. You support David Garcia. If David Garcia were our governor right now, we would have a governor who's against any sort of border on, our, on the south side of Arizona. What is up with that? Do you want to please, denounce please. those endorsements? Hey, border security is incredibly important for our state. Uh, and, you know, I've already addressed this. I would not, it, I would not provide a 17th century solution to this. Uh, if you were to ask NASA to do this, it would be technology. It would be some of the things that Senator McSally just mentioned. But to build a wall, under, you know, for 2,000 miles of border, $20 million a mile, uh, those resources could be used uh, for the technology. It could be used for more border patrol agents on the border. Uh, these are there's smart ways to address this. Uh, and you asked about funding for military bases. You, said, you know, Senator McSally voted to take away money from Fort Huachuca to pay for the border wall. An Arizona senator shouldn't be taking away money from Arizona bases. Moving on to immigration reform, Mr. Kelly, President Trump uh, wants Congress to pass legislation that would make our immigration system more of a merit-based system rather than the current family-based system. Is that a good idea? Well, I'm in support of, you know, H-2B visas and, well, H-1Bs and H-2A visas, you know, agricultural workers, but also folks that are educated. We need an immigration system that's going to be consistent with our values and is going to support our economy. Um, so if President Trump has a proposal for something that does those things, recognizing we're a country of immigrants, I come from a family of immigrants, I think most of, most of us do. And if, if, there, if there are proposals from this president, if I'm elected to the United States Senate, President Trump is reelected, re I will work with him on anything that is in the best interest of Arizona. Senator McSally, do you favor immigration reform that includes a way for young dreamers brought to this country as children to become legal, yeah. permanent Citizens. Well, my heart goes out to these young people who were brought here as children, have no fault of their own. 
They know no other country but America. And I have been leading on solutions to provide a legal path uh, for DACA recipients. But we cannot just address that issue. We've got to address the root issues as well of why we're in this situation in the first place. That's why it's so important for us to continue to secure our border, complete the border wall system, provide our border patrol agents, who I have their backs. Uh, you won't shake their hand, but I have their backs. Provide them everything they need to, uh, to keep us safe. Uh, and as we move forward, we've got to close these loopholes because we see where the cartels, see if they can just traffic families, traffic children on this dangerous journey. They're going to be able to use those loopholes. We've got to close those loopholes to ensure that families can stay together, but ensure that we have a legal immigration system. People come through that front door. So I've been leading on this issue in the House. I've been leading on it in the Senate. But it includes we've got to have that border security. We've got to close those loopholes so we don't find ourselves in the very same situation with another DACA like group of young people in another 5, 10, or 15 years. Sh uh, Mr. Kelly, should DACA be contingent on other aspects of border security? So border security is incredibly important. You know, we need it. Uh, but we have 28,000 mostly young people in the state of Arizona who I look at as, as American as my own two kids. And I think they should have a pathway to citizenship right now. That's something Senator McSally used to kind of support. She was in favor of, of a, a DACA program. Now she says it's unconstitutional. So I don't think it's contingent on anything. Okay, standalone issue for you. Standalone. Standalone for you? I believe we've got a parrot. Again, I, I've been leading on this issue, uh, trying to provide a path forward for these young people. But we've got to address the root causes of why we're in this situation in the first place. Because all it will do, like we've seen in the past, is incentivize more illegal activity. And again, my, my opponent, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Counterfeit Kelly, he hasn't, he hasn't explained why he supported David Garcia to be the governor of Arizona, why he su said he would support Bernie Sanders, why he bankrolled Rashida Tlaib, who has some of the most dangerous ideas on abolishing ICE uh, and sanctuary cities, as well as Ilhan Omar uh, in Minneapolis, and many others who are from the radical left element of the Democrats. Keep in mind, $57 million that he raised from some of the most extreme left-wing people in the country in order to then endorse and bankroll these individuals who are now in office with these ideas that are dangerous for Arizona. So just to be clear for the people who are watching at home and don't know what group you're talking yeah. about or these endorsements, can you please be specific about uh, the group and the endorsements? That well, I think he, he knows. Again, it's a, it's a very radical political organization that's raised $57 million. And then, again, he's been a political operative for a decade uh, at the state legislature, at the governors, those running for House and those running for Senate, some of the most extreme left wing candidates in our country running for office, bankrolling them, endorsing them. Look at the photo. He's got his arm around Omar in Minneapolis. What are you doing in Minneapolis hugging Omar? Mr. Kelly, these endorsements. So the organization that Senator McSally is referring to is named after my wife, Gabby, Gabby Giffords. It's named Giffords. Gabby was injured, shot in the head in 2011. The issue of gun violence is personal for Gabby and me. And I'll never forget, you know, what she went through for that year and a half in the hospital for six months, a year of significant rehab. Today, she still does physical therapy and speech ter therapy. It's an incredible challenge. Uh, so we formed an organization to try to make communities and help communities become safer, you know, safer from gun violence. I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. I'm a gun owner. Um, our rights and traditions are so important. The Second Amendment is so important. But we can never let a bunch of kids in the classroom, you know, get killed and think there's nothing we can do about it. You know, common sense things like background checks for all gun sales, red flag laws. Um, these are common sense things that most Arizonans support. Apparently, Senator McSally does not. Uh, Senator McSally, uh, the president has reportedly, by way of the Wall Street Journal, the Atlantic Monthly, uh, CNN, Fox News, all reporting that he referred to members of the military as, quote, losers and suckers. You are a military veteran. Your thoughts on this? Well, I'm not going to comment on anonymous sources, but what I can tell you is I'm proud to have been able to serve in the military, and, and we're working to rebuild our military after Obama and Biden decimated our military, giving our troops everything they need in order to fight tonight. I mean, we had our units where they 
they, they were not ready to go. Uh, they were decimated in a readiness crisis. We had more people dying in training accidents than they were in combat uh, in the years, the end years of Obama and Biden. So I'm working with President Trump to rebuild our military, to save the A-10, by the way, something I did when President Obama tried to cut it, uh, then President Trump tried to cut it, and I just saved it again. This is critical uh, for Tucson and davis Moth and the troops are on the ground. So I'm always going to have the military's back. But what's at stake here, should we lose the White House, the Senate, and the House, which comes through Arizona? This race will decide the Senate majority. And Chuck Schumer is so proud to have recruited Mark Kelly. He's bankrolled his campaign. He's trying to ensure he has power. And if they get power, the radical left agenda is going to cut our military to pay for the green bad deal, the government takeover of health care, and all the other ideas careening towards socialism. So I am going to stand every single day with our men and women in the military and fight to give them everything they need. That's what's at stake here. Senator, the question remains, um, have you looked into the reports? Have you looked into the anonymous sourced reports? Does it concern you? It concerns a lot of people and a lot of military families. Does it concern you? I get up every single morning fighting for Arizona. That's what I spend my time doing. I listen to Arizonans, hear what they need, and then I deploy to Washington, D.C. to fight for them. You pundits can look into those anonymous allegations. And I'm just telling you, I'm fighting for our military. I I'm fighting for our veterans. But they will cut our military again if they gain power. Mr. Kelly, does it concern you? Absolutely. He's the commander in chief of our armed forces. And to say that about deceased veterans who died on the battlefield, calling them losers and suckers, <laughs> what also concerns me of what he's, is, is what he said about Senator John McCain uh, repeatedly on more than one occasion, especially after his, when he, when he passed away. And those comments are just uncalled for. You know, Senator McCain was a hero of mine from my earliest days in the United States Navy as a Navy pilot. He's the guy we looked up to. He's the guy that, in the unfortunate situation that you ever got shot down, he was the model. Uh, I later got to call him a friend um, and got to know him, which was one of the greatest honors of my lifetime, I would say. And to, to hear Senator McSally not stick up for Senator John McCain when the president of the United States is attacking him repeatedly, even after he passed away. Um, and as a veteran, I, I, I find it incredibly hard to understand that on not one occasion would, would Senator McSally come to Senator McCain's defense. Did you not stick up for Senator McCain? I absolutely have. It's been reported many times. I've publicly and privately repeatedly talked to President Trump and asked him to stop attacking John McCain. It, quite frankly, it pisses me off when he does it. It's been an honor to even work with Senator John McCain. I never would have imagined I learned about him when I was a cadet uh, in the military about what he endured as a POW uh, and to be able to work with him to save the A-10 and support our military and now be able to serve in his seat. And so I've repeatedly said, stop doing that. Uh, let's let him rest in peace. But one thing about Senator McCain we knew here in Arizona, whether you agreed with him or you disagreed with him, we always knew where he stood. And this is another example, Mark, where you're trying to invoke him but you can't even take simple positions on whether you're going to support your recruiter and investor, Chuck Schumer, whether you're going to abolish the filibuster, whether you support PAC in the Supreme Court, where you say one thing, a bunch of platitudes, but you can't even tell Arizonans with, where you stand. Thank you, Senator. Let's move on to climate change. And a reminder, you'll each have 90 seconds to respond to this question. This year, Arizona experienced the driest, hottest summer on record. The state's water supply, as you both know, is in a precarious position. A recent poll shows that 70% of Arizonans want climate change to be a national priority. How do we affordably transition to renewable solutions? Senator McSally, we'll start with you. Thanks. The climate is changing, and there is a human element to it. The question is, what do we do? Uh, what we should not do is the Green Bad Deal. Again, this has been proposed. The author of the Green Deal is someone that my opponent endorsed and bankrolled. And he said, let's ban fossil fuels and have a carbon tax himself. What the Green Bad Deal would do is it would cost $93 trillion. That's $65,000 for every household in America every year. This heavy-handed approach would be devastating to our economy. And you can just look next door in California. They're trying these heavy-handed mandates that are not working. They have blackouts right now because it's not based on the science. 
I've been leading on efforts to ensure we have an all the above energy strategy. We're finally in a place where we're energy independent. Thank God, I've deployed to the Middle East uh, five times and once to Afghanistan. So we're now a net exporter of energy. We need additional clean energy for sure, but that includes nuclear, the Palo Verde nuclear plant. Uh, I've been leading on efforts so we can have more research uh, in energy storage, because right now the sun goes down at night and we don't have good grid level storage. And for any of that storage, uh, even if it's for a few hours, we're relying on China for those minerals and that processing. So we've got to bring those jobs home. So look, you said you would ban fossil fuels, you're for a carbon tax. How is that any different than the Green Bad Deal? And you've supported the author of the Green New Deal, which would be devastating for Arizona households, those in rural communities who can't afford their electric bills as it is. Let's use innovation, not what the left is offering. Mr. Kelly, you have well, I don't seconds. know where Senator McSally gets her information from, but since the Green New Deal was authored, I've been against it. There's a lot of stuff in there that has nothing to do with climate. I made that very clear. I don't know why she says I'm against fossil fuels. I'm a pilot of an airplane. Uh, so is Senator McSally. You're not going to do that without fossil fuels. It's, it's, it's kind of, the whole thing's kind of silly. But I'll never forget the first time I got to see our planet for the first time from low Earth orbit, you know, seeing this big round ball and realizing that we are really all in this together. And it becomes very clear very quickly that we have no place else to go. There is no planet B. No, we're not moving somewhere else someday. We have to do a better job taking care of this planet. We have gone from about 280 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere pre-industrial revolution to about 420 today. You talk about flattening a curve, that's a curve we need to flatten. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to move to more renewable energy. With Senator McSally, you just got to follow the money. You know, Senator McSally takes hundreds of thousands of dollars of corporate pack checks from oil and gas companies and gives them a $20 billion tax cut, essentially. And that's why we're having a difficult time solving this problem. Hey, this could be good for Arizona. If we uh, extend the investment tax credit by five years, 30 percent on solar energy, this could be good jobs. We can create the technology here. We can manufacture it here. We can deploy it here. It could be great for our state, but we, we can't wait around and do nothing anymore. We need independent leadership in Washington, D.C. that's going to put Arizona first, not put a big corporation on the other side of the country first. Do you support mandates with deadlines to get this done? One example requiring zero emission vehicles by a certain date. Hey, I think when this administration rolled back uh, emission standards and also clean air regulations and clean water regulations, that now we're going to have more polluted air and more polluted water. Senator McSally supported all that. That was a mistake. Senator, do you support mandates with deadlines? I'm an outdoors woman and I want clean air and clean water. But what I don't want is to hurt Arizonans, the working poor, rural Arizonans, those in tribal communities who can't afford these mandates that are coming from Washington, D.C. that are not based on science. We saw that under Obama, but now they're going too far. And look, this is another example where he's saying he didn't say let's ban fossil fuels. But in a TV interview last year, he said those very words, I think we should ban fossil fuels and have a carbon tax. This is a regressive tax that would hurt the working poor and hurt rural communities the most. So I'm leading on investing in energy research so we can have energy storage. We can find cleaner ways for uh, our energy to move forward, but do it based on the science and innovation. We're going to innovate our way out of this and America will lead the way. And in the meantime, our emissions are going down. Our CO2 emissions are going down. China, the big polluter, who he's, in, who he's doing business with, their emissions are going up. So let's innovate our way out, not ban fossil fuels like counterfeit Kelly wants to do. Uh, I don't know where Senator McSally gets her information from, but there is no circumstance or ever said to ban fossil fuels. So at this point, you know, she's just making stuff up. Mr. Kelly, different sort of climate question. It's the mm -hmm. climate in our cities, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, in the wake of the killing of George Floyd in May, we saw rallies, we saw protests. President Trump, in some cases, referred to them as violent. We've seen, is there a discussion of, of who's on the right, who's on the left, who's causing these problems? The fact is, if you were to be in the Senate, that could be a federal responsibility in terms of funding for our cities, funding for police forces. Where do you stand on that in terms of helping our cities deal with some of this, whether it's social injustice, racial injustice, or just police relations with communities? Well, you know, the promise of our country shouldn't be that your race determines what kind of education you get, what kind of health care you can get, success in life, or how an interaction with the police is, is going to turn out. And we need some reform in policing. My, both of my parents were cops. 
Um, so I understand it is incredibly difficult jobs. Police officers need the resources to do a very hard job. I am 100% behind that. And it's a difficult job. I recognize that. Uh, but there are necessary reforms needed in policing. Um, but the protests that we have seen across the country, there is no place for that. Uh, I fought to defend our Constitution, our First Amendment, the right for people to peacefully protest. But what we've seen over the last months um, is beyond that, and it needs to end. And cities and communities need the resources to deal with this in an effective way. And then we've got to, um, there's some common sense things we can do uh, to keep uh, mostly African-American men safer in these encounters when they're encountering police. Uh, more accountability, independent investigations and oversight, body cameras, uh, consent decrees, which is the Department of Ju Justice uh, overseeing police departments when they need to make some changes. Uh, this issue of qualified immunity. These are common sense things that can be done to reform policing. I think it's necessary, but the violence we see in our communities has to end. The federal government should be helping with some resources where it makes sense and where governors need that. Senator, what reforms would you like to see on that? Well, we've got to route out racism in any form, whether it's in any institution or in anyone's hearts. And there's only one candidate up here who has had to apologize for a racist slur, and it's not me. And if you watch the murder of George Floyd, it was despicable, not just the officer who killed him, but those who st stood by and allowed it to happen. And so we moved forward some common sense police reform. Tim Scott's bill, it was about 70 percent of what the Democrats were asking for. It was good reforms. Uh, in order to address some of these issues and give more funding to police. I back the blue. I've gotten the endorsement of the Arizona Police Association. What's happening right now in our cities, the violence is despicable. And you see many on the left who are just standing by and doing nothing. Again, I'd ask my opponent whether he wants to take back the endorsement that he gave to Ilhan Omar, who in Minneapolis is leading the effort to defund the police. He's standing there with his arm around him. This is dangerous. Those the 12,000 officers in the Arizona Police Association, they know that I've got their back, and that's why they're backing me. And I think I just heard, I'd like to know whether he would vote for Tim Scott's bill, but I think I just heard that he wants to support criminals being able to sue police officers just for doing their jobs. Now, I know what it's like to make life and death decisions in combat in the A-10 Warthog, and our men and women go out every single day and kiss their families goodbye. They need to have our backs and not have criminals to be able to sue them. Did you say you supported that, uh, that uh, Nancy Pelosi bill, who you also endorsed and supported, well, to, to on the allow Scott, criminals to sue police officers? On the Tim Scott bill that you referenced, the Leadership Conference on Human and Civil Rights says it's inadequate, and other organizations. It didn't include qualified immunity. It didn't include consent decrees. It didn't include body cameras or use of force laws. I think that, the, that when police officers are found, that there was serious wrongdoing, there should be an accountability aspect to that. Um, it's, it's, as, as a son of two police officers, you know, my mom and my dad, you know, I realize this is a tough job. But there should be accountability, there should be independent investigation, and there should be oversight. Senator McSally, are our cities safe? Some would say President Trump has sort of fomented some of the racial problems by making it seem as if there's a divide between white and black. Uh, the violence and the anarchy that's happening in cities across the country is devastating to local communities. The violence is going up. The attacks on police officers. Listen to what Kennifer Kelly just said. He said he would support allowing criminals to sue police officers simply for doing their job. That's why they're backing me, those police officers. They know with the attacks that are going up on them right now, vilifying them, that are led by people like Ilhan Omar, his wingman, uh, that's what's happening right now. We need more funding the police. We need to back the blue. And those local mayors, they need to provide public safety. Look, what these guys want, if they're given, you know, if they're given power, which we need to stop from happening, is to vilify the police, defund the police, and then come after your Second Amendment rights so you can't defend yourself and your families. I back the blue, okay. and we need to make sure they have everything they need to keep us safe. Do you, support, do you support criminals filing suit against police officers just for doing their jobs? Not criminals filing suits against police officers, but That's cool. when there's wrongdoing, and clearly there was an investigation, and part of being accountable and part of being respectful in the community, I think, 
you know, there should be some level of accountability for cops when there was clear wrongdoing. Uh, look, that's a big deal. The, these men and women in blue, they could lose their retirements, they could lose their homes, their college funds simply for doing their jobs. Getting sued by criminals, getting rid of this qualified immunity, that's what it means, you guys. I back the blue. All right, let's move on. Senator McSally, after mass shootings last year, you said that you would be open to considering red flag gun laws to try to keep weapons away from dangerous people. Is that the case? And what specifically would that look like today? Yeah. What I said was we need to do everything we can in order to stop these tragedies from happening. And I've been leading on this uh, in the House and the Senate. We've got a background check system that often isn't working as it is. We've had shootings happen where somebody should have been in the system, but instead they passed a background check. So I've passed the Fix Nix Act to make sure we strengthen that background check system. And we need more mental health support. I've led on the effort to get more mental health funding out there and more support to schools for them to have the security they need so parents can drop their kids off at schools and ensure that they are safe. But right now, more than ever, I'm your Second Amendment senator. I think I've shot the biggest gun of anybody in Congress in the 30 millimeter on the A-10. And our constitutional rights are at risk right now. And, you know, counterfeit Kelly can say, I've got some guns, but make no mistake, the agenda of the people he has supported to include people like Beta O'Rourke and others, they're coming after our Second Amendment rights right now. Law-abiding citizens deserve to keep their ability to defend their family and defend their own lives. And that's what's at stake right now. We're one judge away for us losing our Second Amendment rights, and their legislative agenda will be coming after them as well. So we can do things like I've led on in order to protect communities, but we must protect the Second Amendment. So again, last year you said you were open to considering red flag gun laws. Is that still the yeah, you're case? Mi you're misstating the conversations we were having with the White House. We need to make sure that if somebody has been adjudicated to be mentally ill by a judge, that they're in the NIC system. Uh, that's what the law is right now. And many states don't put that information in the NIC system, so people end up passing a background check anyway. We've got to have due process for people. We've got to ensure that their constitutional rights are never taken away unless they have gone through that due process. And the laws are on the books. If you're a felon or a domestic abuser or you've been adjudicated to be mentally ill, I support the Second Amendment. We need to do everything we can, obviously, to keep communities safe. But you all, you know, the people he's supporting, they want to defund the police, and then they want to take away your Second Amendment rights so you can't defend your family. I'm against that. Just to be clear, I did not misspeak. We've had multiple conversations at the Arizona Republic with your office, so I just want to be clear on that. We've written quite a bit about that. Mr. Kelly, a lot of Americans first um, heard of you as the voice of gun control in this nation. <clears throat> Here you are running for the U.S. Senate, and you haven't raised the issue of gun safety or gun control much over the last year and a half that you've been in this race. Why not? Well, it's, the issue is incredibly important to me, and it's incredibly important to Arizonans. And I have to first say, Senator McSally, I have a lot of respect for that 30-millimeter cannon in the A-10 that Senator McSally got to, got to shoot. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great weapon system. Uh, I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. I have been my whole life. I remember when my dad gave me my first firearm. I was in Beeville, Texas, going through flight school, <laughs> just got my wings, and he bought me a 9mm Glock. And that's the gun that I flew in combat with in the first Gulf War. It's one of my most prized possessions. And I have a lot of firearms. And, but I don't, um, I don't think um, that we should ever get to the point where we think a bunch of kids getting killed in a classroom is just normal. Some stronger gun laws is not inconsistent with our Second Amendment rights. We can respect our rights and traditions on gun ownership under the Second Amendment, and we can have stronger communities. That includes things like Yvonne, like you mentioned, red flag laws, uh, background checks for all gun sales. Senator McSally in the past has said background checks are unconstitutional. Well, most guns are sold with a background check right now, but there's these giant loopholes that you can drive a truck through. And here in Arizona, a majority of Arizonans support background checks for all gun sales and red flag laws. And a couple other things. These are common sense things uh, that will keep communities safe. And at the same time, we can respect our Second Amendment rights. Why haven't you talked more about your viewpoints on this on the campaign trail? Well, I generally talk about what folks ask me about. And they often ask about their health care, 
prescription drugs. I mean, the price of prescription medication. I met this mom, you know, recently named Ophelia, and she was having to make these horrible decisions about whether she fills her son's prescription, her prescription, or buys groceries for the week. Uh, and these are horrible choices that Arizonans currently have to make. These are the issues that folks care about. Um, not getting COVID-19 relief. We have so many Arizonans, so many members of our community, they're really struggling. Food banks are maxed out. Um, I mean, folks are having to make these horrible choices, and the United States Senate went home. That's not leadership for Arizona. Uh, real quickly, are you against background checks for all gun sales? Well, I'm, I'm for the Second Amendment, and here's just another example where my opponent says, I've got a gun, and I'm not talking. The reason he's not talking about it is because Arizonans care about their Second Amendment constitutional rights. And should he get elected, this will switch, uh, switch the Senate majority and they will be able to ram through the most radical anti Second Amendment agenda. And he's been leading the charge over the last 10 years supporting the most extreme left-wing elements of his party, the Frankenstein he created, Senator, we are now Senator. leading the effort to take away our Second Amendment Senator, rights. I'm not going to let that happen. We only have 30 seconds left. Yeah. Are you against background checks for all gun sales? I have been strengthening the background check system that we have. Oftentimes, somebody is a prohibited possessor and they're not in the background check system. So I've been leading to strengthen the system that we have while ensuring that Arizona's Second Amendment rights are protected. All right, uh, that's it. We have to stop it right there. Thank you, candidates, so much. It's now time for our closing statements, and we begin <laughs> with Mark Kelly. Well, thank you, everybody, for spending the time to listen to Senator McSally and to me tonight. This is a critical moment for our country and our state, and partisan politics has made this crisis worse. And partisan politics and partisan politicians are not going get to us, get us out of it. We need independent leadership focused on solving the problems we face, like beating this virus and rebuilding our economy and lowering the cost of health care and prescription drugs. I can bring my experience as a combat pilot, an engineer, as an astronaut to the United States Senate to help solve some of these serious problems. But I can't do that without your vote. Whether you're an independent, a Republican, or a Democrat, I ask for your vote. These are serious challenges that we face. By working together as a team, we can solve these serious problems. Thank you, everybody. And for the final closing statement, we turn now to Senator Martha McSally. Arizona, you'll start voting tomorrow, and this is such a consequential decision. It will decide the Senate majority. It will decide the direction of our country. And you do have a choice here. You have somebody who's been a fighter for you and will continue to be a fighter for Arizona, or a counterfeit who will enable the radical left and their agenda to be forced on it. Uh, so there's a lot at stake here. I'm humbly, ask, humbly asking for your vote. And you know what, Mark? This has been a great discussion. Thanks for everybody for the conversation here. I think Arizonans really prefer this probably to 30 second slick TV ads. So why don't we do this three more times in the next few weeks? We could. You know, we could go to um, Green Valley, we could go to Yuma, we could go to Prescott. I'm sure the local media would support, uh, uh, you know, holding these debates. We agree right now. Let's do three more of these around Arizona, because Arizonans really deserve to have this conversation candidate to candidate about what's at well, stake. I'm really looking forward agree? to next week, I think, on Univision. Will, will you agree to be three a, more? That'll be an, an interesting conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, that, uh, that kind of proves my point, Arizona. Uh, all right. That is it for this election 2020 debate for the U.S. Senate, brought to you by Arizona Citizens Clean Elections Commission, Arizona PBS, the Arizona Republic, KJAZZ Radio, and Arizona Public Media. And if you'd like to hear more about the debate, including analysis from the four of us, please join us immediately after one on, on one of our live streams. The post-debate analysis show will be carried on ArizonaCentral.com, AZPM.org, KJZZ.org, and AZPBS.org. And we hope you join us for future debates, including the debate for Congressional District 1 on Thursday night and the debate for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office on Friday. And thanks to the candidates for their participation. And thank you for joining us as well. You have a great evening.